continues his message. How to pray. Acts 12 verse 5 is the first key I'm going to give you. Acts 12 5. The Bible says these words. And, and this is, I know simple, but this is so powerful. Very powerful. It says, Peter therefore was kept in prison. But prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Say, unto God. unto God. Say it again. That's the first key. I'm giving you the first key. I'm giving you very foundational, biblical, powerful truth that will change your life. Number one. The prayer that has power is the prayer that's offered unto God. Because much of what is called prayer is not. And much of what is prayer has nothing to do with God. Unto God is the first key because it demands a face-to-face -face meeting. How can you pray if you're not talking to somebody? Unto God means face to face. Unto God means what? Face to face. Say it again. Face to face. Now, face to face means relationship. Means I must come into His presence. It means I must know Him. This is impossible without the Holy Spirit. So, to really pray unto God, I must have the Holy Spirit bring me to God. I cannot pray unto God unless I'm brought into His presence. And since I cannot come on my own, I need the one who can bring me there. That's why the Bible says, by the Spirit we cry, Abba, Father. You don't just talk to God. How can you talk to God? He's God in your flesh. He's eternal and you're not. How can you approach a God you've never seen? How can you talk to the eternal one and all you are is a piece of dust? How can the divine touch the corrupt? And how can the corrupt approach the divine? Impossible. That's why Job wrote, Who hath known his ways? God is unknown to man. He's only known to the spirit of man. Nobody can know God. Let's face it. He is not known to the flesh. People, look, you must understand something. Before God revealed himself to Abraham, people made images out of him, not knowing what to make of him. They looked at the heavens and they said, well, somebody made it, so let's just uh, decide ourselves that that somebody is the sun or the moon or the tree or a rock. Humanity could not discover this God because He was unknown. Therefore, God had to reveal Himself to a man. His name was Abraham. Now, the only way to find God was to find Abraham. And then God revealed Himself to Isaac and to Jacob. Think about only a family knew God and the whole world was in darkness. So the God of heaven was only known to a few. And anyone who was looking for God had to find Abraham or Isaac or Jacob or a member of their family to see where is this God, how do I find him? Later this God revealed himself to a whole nation. 
So to find God, you have to find His people. Because outside those people were idols. Because nobody knew what to make of Him. How to find Him? What does it look like? Israel were His representatives. Later, God revealed Himself in one man named Christ Jesus. Therefore, to find God, you have to find Christ Jesus. And to this day, it is so. Outside Christ Jesus, you cannot find God. God shows a family, a nation, to bring forth Christ Jesus. And only through Him is God discovered and found. This, now, now, this blessed God is a person. And through Christ, by His Spirit, we can find Him. That's why prayer is impossible without Jesus Christ. And prayer is impossible without going in by the Spirit. I have discovered that years ago. It changed my life. When I said, Holy Spirit, I don't know. I do not know how to pray. Help me talk to my Father. It changed my life. So many people are praying and going nowhere. Why? They don't have a face-to-face -face fellowship. No face-to-face -face encounter. It's impossible without you can't pray without that. Say prayer, prayer. demands prayer. a face-to-face -face encounter. Face -face encounter. Say it again. Prayer demands a face -face encounter. That's only the first key. I'm teaching you how to pray. To pray, you must have a face-to-face -face meeting with God Almighty. And to have a face-to-face -face meeting, you must, hear this, you must be brought in by the Spirit. We have access by the Spirit. Say it. We have access. So you cannot walk in on your own. The invitations of Hebrews come in boldly into the throne room of grace is impossible without the Spirit. That's number one. Number two. Now this is very, very important. Prayer must be constant prayer. Because we are commanded to pray Constantly, without ceasing. Now, the Word of God clearly states that we must pray constantly. In, in Acts 12, verse 5, it says constant prayer. Notice what it says there. Prayer was made without ceasing. Constant prayer. Now, what is constant prayer? This is the second key. Constant prayer means, and you've got to look at the word constant, because the word constant means stretched out. Literally, it's, a, it's, a, it's an intensely stretching out to God. It's, it's like someone who is drowning in a pool, reaching out to the hands of a man who's going to save him. That's what it means. Constantly, that word means stretched outwardly it means to stretch with all power to be rescued oh jesus help me get this to them the closest translation is with deep intensity um, th that same word is used in hebrews 5 Verse 7, I'm going to read it to you. Oh, how I've experienced this. The Bible says this, Hebrews 5, 7, listen. Who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears. It's that deep, intense prayer. Paul the Apostle used the same language in Romans 15 30 when he said strive together with me in prayer fight contend fight with your whole soul put your soul into it stretch out toward God in intense agonizing desire that's what it means that's the second key and that too is impossible without the Holy Spirit 
people of God, you got to understand something. When you begin prayer, you must wait till the Holy Spirit stirs you. And when He stirs you, there will begin an agonizing, groaning, crying with intensity. That's what the word constant means. That's what without ceasing means. You are stretched out. You are so intense that every part of you is crying out. Only possible by the Spirit. Lift your hands to heaven. Father, in Jesus' name, let that be with every one of them. Lord, let that kind of prayer be born in every one of them. In the name of Jesus. Therefore, it is impossible to pray this kind of prayer without waiting upon the Spirit. You cannot rush in. You must understand Romans 8.26 because many have misunderstood Romans 8.26. The Bible is very clear on this fact. It says, likewise, the Holy Spirit helps our infirmities. Why? Because we don't know how to pray. The disciples said, teach us to pray. We still say the same prayer. We, we're still crying out, Lord, teach us to pray. That's why I'm so glad I'm beginning with this conference with this one thing. Lord, teach us to pray. Real prayer. Not some empty nothing. Real prayer that will change our lives. The Spirit also helps our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us. What? With groanings. That's that same word constant that cannot be uttered. People of God, listen to me. I'm sure many of you have experienced it. But this kind of prayer is the only prayer that will change your life. The only prayer that has results. The only prayer that brings the presence of God on you. And the only prayer that breaks the chains of your life. It's that prayer. But there is a waiting period. And in that waiting period, in that waiting time, it's life or death. If you give up, you'll die. If you give up, you lose. If you give up, you're defeated. Wait until the Holy Spirit will move upon you as He moved upon Samson. Wait till He begins to wet the grounds of your soul. Wait until the dew of heaven begins to touch your heart. Don't say a word until He touches you. That is the most difficult thing to do. That's why the Bible says, let your words be few. Because if you work up your own energy and you pump the flesh, God will not listen. Now, when the Holy Spirit is on you, I have never known a time, never, where I began screaming at God. Never repeat myself. Never mumble, numble, nothing. In the presence of God, you don't need your prayer list. Everything you thought you wanted to say, you cannot say it. Because now the Holy Ghost is taking over. The first thing that's going to happen to you, you're going to break. You will know the Holy Ghost is there when He's there, because the first thing He'll do is break you. A contrite heart, O oh God, thou wilt not despise. 
True prayer is born out of brokenness. Not repetition. Not some bless me, keep me, help me, my mom, my dad, my job, my kids. Everything you do in the flesh is wearing you down. Just be quiet. Just say nothing. How do I start? No, that's the wrong question. Don't start. Just sit there and let him start. What do you mean let him? Yes, let him start. Just sit there. But I got to let him know I'm there. He's not blind. He can see you. Just sit there. <laughs> what do I do in the meantime? Wait. What do you mean wait? Wait. You mean just wait? I mean just wait. What do I do if I wait? Nothing. Just wait. He knows you're there and he knows why you're there. How long? Who cares? That's your problem. You see, we're not willing to pay that one price. Time. Because we are accustomed to quick healing. Quick deliverance. Quick, 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 quick. There's nothing quick. My friend, listen to me. Listen carefully to me. Be still and know I'm God. Just sit there. Now when you are completely surrendered, and that's your biggest battle. Your biggest battle is just sit there and do nothing. Don't get occupied. Don't wear yourself out because most of us wear ourselves to the ground. And by the time he comes in, we are completely wiped out <laughs> by our begging and our